I put it on here, but I never had a chance to actually wire it. You can see I just made a mount out of some uh, scrap aluminum. I fabric cobbled it in place. It might not be necessary for this specific light bar, but uh, I don't know if you can see that on there. Somebody told me to get some black RTV and just put that around the, uh, the plexiglass or whatever that is front of this thing. It just is a little bit of added weatherproofing and do the same where the cord goes in. Is it redundant? I don't know, probably. But the fact is it's very cheap. It's a lot cheaper than light bars, which are also pretty stinking cheap. And um, you know, it's, it's just cheap insurance. So I went ahead and did it. And then I wired it up. Basically, I just ran my two wires down the uh, side of the tractor here. And then I got a switch on the inside and they run directly to the battery alongside the cable that I had to run right there for my Baylor monitor. Now I know some people will say, I can't believe you put that on the handguard. <laughs> well, at least in North American agriculture, the right side of the tractor is pr it pretty much only has a door as like an emergency exit. This is where like my radio is so I can talk to trucks as I'm loading them. This is where the loader joystick is. Uh, multiple baler monitors in here and I usually set that backpack here with some snacks and stuff. So uh, I'm not really worried about actually having to grab onto this and impaling myself on the old zip ties. Uh, so the way that I did this is I took this piece of scrap aluminum plate and I riveted it to this thing here and there's five holes there. I have plans to add one, maybe two more light bars to this on the back of it. There'll be smaller ones though, but I wanted essentially uh, room to grow if I ever wanted to wire other stuff on here. So that's why there's five holes in it, but you can see just a simple switch. Oh yeah, it works. Better work, I've been uh, having it bounce around <laughs> for like two solid weeks before I finally got to wiring it. Oh, that's brighter than the sun, I love it. We're gonna get to try it out today. I don't really want to, but uh, some ground that I farm, the people who own it are actively trying to sell it, at least as of when I'm filming this. And so I can't leave hay there. Once I bail it, I have to haul it off of there, which kind of sucks because it takes my time. You know, usually when I haul hay, I'm delivering it. And obviously I charge by the mile then. This doesn't really put any money in my pocket, but it's still time and fuel, which kind of sucks. But that land is cheap to get onto and it's, it's not really great land, but it's, uh, it's worth what I pay for it, so it's not the end of the world. Oh, and the other thing, as I wander around and look for my stupid wrench, um, yeah, I got like three or four of them because I didn't know which size I needed, and I, oh wait, here it is. I knocked it off the thing earlier. Yeah, I wasn't gonna start the machine with an unaccounted for wrench. Anyway, let's talk about the wiring for this light bar because I looked at the Amazon listing on that and they said it's like a bazillion watts of light or whatever. And the way they market these things, from my understanding, is actually a little deceptive because it's obviously it's not a bazillion watts of light. It's the equivalent in LEDs to a billion watts or whatever, whatever insane number they use, a billion watts of uh, non-LED light, the old crappy halogen lights or whatever those things are. So you don't actually need nearly as much power because oh, obviously it's an LED. And going from non-LED lights to LED lights is like going from a carbureted engine to literally any other type. It's so much phenomenally better in literally every possible way. So anyway, no one on the Amazon listing for this light bar knows how much power it takes. From what I saw, the manufacturer doesn't tell you and uh, somebody figured it, was, it needs like 140 amps of power or something. And I was like, that seems a little bit much. And I looked at all the reviews and somebody says, oh, I measured it and it takes 78, you know, amps or something, 78 amps of power. So you need an 80 amp fuse. So I did the math. I looked up a wiring chart, figured out to get 80 amps to this thing. I need like quarter inch thick cable, like welding cable. I think it actually was welding cable. I think it was like number four cable or something. And this giant inline 80 amp fuse and all this other stuff. So that's what I ordered when I ordered my light bar. And it arrives and I got all this big heavy wire and what's sticking out the end of the light bar but two little skimpy 14 gauge wires or maybe 16 gauge wires even, I don't know. And I was like, all right, something's not right here. And I talked to one of my mechanic friends. He took one look at this thing. He's like, yeah, no, nah, dude, you, you don't need 80 amps going to that. And uh, he, took, he looked at it. He's like, bro, I'm going to tell you this. You won't believe me, but... At this one place I used to work, the morons there actually used to wire light bars about this big with speaker wire, and somehow they never caught fire. And I said to him, 
I have done welding work for that place where you used to work, and I have no doubt about this whatsoever. So obviously I didn't use speaker wire. Don't use speaker wire, for, I mean, for Pete's sake. But uh, what I use is 14 gauge wire with a 10 amp inline fuse. And as you can see with that 10 amp fuse, it is definitely running. And uh, here, I'll even show you guys, because I know, I know people will be like, hey, there's nobody that's gonna run on 10 amps. Ah! Man, ah, come on, open. Ah, oh, shoot, I bumped it. Okay, well, you know what? This is even better. Look, 10 amps, it's the red one. It's not supposed to be this tight. I think I'll, I'll, I should work a little more slack through that wire, but yeah, you get the idea. It works. And it's just, I love these LED light bar. Obviously, this is the first time I've seen this one work. I'm glad it does work. But one of my favorite mods to my gooseneck trailer that I haul hay with is I put two, I think, eight or 10 inch light bars on the back of the tongue shining over the deck of the trailer. And then I think I put six total little four inch light bars under the deck radiating out. So cheap, it was like two, $300 to do that whole mod. And I'm thankful for it literally every single time I use the trailer after dark, which as anybody who farms knows is every time you ever use a trailer. I, I don't know, it's just, I have told people to do that mod, but they, they just, they won't do it because if you think it's hard to get folks to expend time and money to maintain farm equipment, which it's just, it doesn't happen, nobody does it, uh, then if you think that's hard, try getting people to do anything to improve a trailer. I feel like one in three trailers I see rolling around here, they don't even have the dust caps on the axles. You look in, there's a big hex nut with like a quarter inch of dusty grit on the outside of it. It's Anyway, yeah, one, one of those things that I'm uh, probably gonna run a light to is I'm gonna put a plate here with another eight or 10 inch light bar mounted at an angle of some sort shining this way. So that way it'll be shining right into the front of the mower conditioner. That'll be really nice for cutting after dark. Man, the uh, shuttle shift lever in this thing used to squeak when you go like that and it was driving me crazy. So I sprayed it down with this oil I got and it was, uh, was kind of like a freebie. It came with a can of other oil that I actually wanted to buy. And I never tried it before and it stinks like, like a combination of cherry candy and high school skank perfume. It's, it's actually rather unpleasant to be in here right now until that evaporates. I mean, it was free, so I can't really complain, but ugh, crank that up. All right, everyone, so I'm out here raking hay. It is a little after nine o'clock at night and I'm almost done with this field. There's like a hundred yards left to rake. And I figured now would be a great time to show off this awesome LED light bar because I'm very, very happy with it. I will concede that I think it needs an adjustment. Like you can pivot it this way and this way as I pivoted it about like, about like that. I, I need to move it like one click up, I think, but it, it's pretty close. So I'm gonna turn off all the lights here. Okay, so this is with no lights. This is with the tractor's lights. You can see, we can see the windrow ahead of us, that row of hay in a little bit of the um of the windrows that are going this way because we're at the end of the field the field ends right here so i've been going up and down up and down up and down like this and now i'm cleaning up the edge so this is what we can see with the tractor's original headlights and keep in mind well you know we'll talk about the the factory cab lights here in a moment let's let this car go by so i don't blind them too much but prepare for the awesomeness ladies and gentlemen Oh yeah, look at that. I know in these comparisons, you usually can't see all that much, uh, you know, and, and other things that people have done on YouTube uh, in light bar videos I've seen, but I mean, that is that is pretty substantial. We've gone from, well here, I'll show you. We've gone from that to that, all this. Look, you can see all these other windrows out here. And um, yeah, and keep in mind, this is before I adjust the light bar. It's pivot, like it's focused there. It needs to be focused up there a little bit. Now, yes, it does block the factory lights that Kubota gives you, but that's fine because these lights suck. Here, let me show you. This, and I'll even open the window so you can see, this is all you get with the factory lights. And I mean, you can you can guess, the front of the tractor, if this was on the front, the front of the tractor would be like about there or so. So these lights, they literally go like 15 feet away and then all the light is dispersed. It's, you know, it's not that bad for hay rake because obviously, look, you can see the crop we got there. You can see the rake itself. But I mean, you can see why last summer I literally could not tell what I had raked and what I had it with this. And, and I mean, you can see that you, 
you get a faint impression of like two windrows and those are huge windrows that I've already raked together like this. Good luck finding individual little bits of crop laying around. It's just the lights in this thing are really subpar. And you know what? I'll, <laughs> I'll show you guys this. Guess how much of this light that you see right now is from the original headlights? That. I mean, like, why even bought... The only reason to even turn on the headlights on this tractor because they're so bad is because the the dash is wired in with them. I mean, you can see, you can really only tell because it's an orange light as opposed to the white of the LEDs. And it does shine a little bit further. There is a little more light way up there, which is good. But I mean, to put it gently, I don't regret installing this light bar. Now I thought, I used to think that these are kind of dude bro style, you know, what does mechanic Steve say? They're bro dozer style light bars, just those giant ones across the front of everything. And to be fair, I do still feel that way a little bit, but man, this thing is absolutely, oh, that's my radio. This thing is absolutely awesome. I don't remember what I paid for it. I think it was like 80 bucks or something, uh, like $88 or something, but man, was it ever worth it. Because the alternative is this. It's not that bad, but it certainly isn't good. And I mean, you, you just can't see anywhere beyond 15 feet or so from the tractor with lights like this. Meanwhile, here you can clearly see where there's hay on the ground and where there isn't. And we're gonna do one of these numbers and loop around up here. And look, you can see there's those side panels of light. So you can even see it's like in the peripherals of where we're going with this thing. And we're gonna clean all this up. This is actually about all that I need to do here. And then hopefully I'll be back to bail day after tomorrow, Lord willing and machinery cooperating. Um, yeah. So anyway, look, you can see all that grass out there that I can't cut because there's like a giant drainage terrace there. <laughs> I've driven my tractor over this and going down the other side, it's like straight down. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, that's my, thus concludes the video.